I am going to read chapter 7 in Torpedo today. It's called U-Boat 48. The commander of the U-Boat, Captain San Louis Enrique Blackrot, was not quite 31 years old. His birthday was in a month. Ajax, as he was called, a nickname he'd had since childhood, had started out as a sailor in the Merchant Marine and had been in the Kriegsmarine, the German Navy, since before the war began. He'd been on U-boats for several years, but this was his first stint as a commander. He'd taken charge only two weeks earlier. His submarine, U-48, was a Type uh, 7B, more powerful and agile than earlier models. It was also a little faster and could hold more fuel, giving it a longer range. Uh, 7Bs carried 14 torpedoes. All U-boats had an insignia. U-48's was a black cat. And like all other U-boats in the Kriegsmarine, U-48 carried a full-size German flag, red, with a black swastika encircled by white. The submarines would fly their flags heading back into port. During the course of the Second World War, the 7B submarines performed well for the Germans, torpedoed a lot of ships, and this particular U-boat would go on to be the most successful in the German fleet. In his two years of active service, U-48 would sink 54 merchant ships in one warship, under three different commanders. Ajax Blackrot was about to make his first major contribution to the record. Ajax was short and square, handsome with dark hair. He was outgoing, talkative, and a hard drinker. He had a good reputation and most important was respected and liked by his crew. Rolf Hilsey, the 18-year-old wireless radio engineer on the boat, was struck by his new commander's confidence and friendliness. Good morning, Captain Rolf, had said on, the Bla on Blackrot's first morning on the boat. Don't call me Captain, Blackrot told him. So there is the man that I am talking about. <clears throat> Just tip your hat to me when you see me in the morning and when you go to bed at night. Hilsey and Blackrot became friends during the time they served together on U-48. The commander didn't have to become friends with everyone, but it was essential for him to have his men's confidence and respect. Admiral Carl Donitz, creator of the submarine fleet and later the commander-in-chief of the Craig's Marine described the crew of a submarine as a community bound by fate. Each sailor held every other sailor's life in his hands, and the boat's soul was the commander. If the men trusted their leader, they would obey his orders without question. This was imperative while on active patrol. If a U-boat didn't follow orders, there easily could be a disaster. There was so much risk, so much at stake. One wrong move, one disobeyed order, and they could all die. An unclosed valve could result in water pouring in. The whole crew drowning. A sudden pressure change also could kill everyone. If a sailor on lookout missed an enemy ship or plane, the U-boat could be destroyed by a depth change. Each man's role was essential, and everyone had a part in keeping the crew safe and alive. Even just everyday life on a U-boat depended on cooperation and com camaraderie. In U-48, 38 men lived together in a cylindrical hull. With all the equipment for the boat, the bunks, the bathroom, the kitchen, the food, the wireless radio, and at least to start with 14 torpedoes. This space was 160 feet long and only about 15 feet across. In these tight quarters, the men worked, cooked, ate, slept, talked, read, through Rolf, the Rolf, thought the light wasn't really good enough for reading, played cards, chess, checkers, and dominoes, listened to music, and went to the bathroom. Once in a while, they bathed. Each crew member had eight hours of sleep. Eight hours on watch and eight hours of standby. While he wasn't standing watch, Rolf Hilsey was bored sick. Sometimes even being on watch was boring. Rolf could spend hours listening to the radio for ships nearby, the hear nearby and hear nothing. Other crew members would look through the periscope while under the water and through binoculars while on the surface. Usually there was nothing to see. Days and days with no ships in sight. There were also days and days when the ocean was too wild to fire. The eels, as they called the torpedoes. If there was no action, there was only a feeling of endless time. Other than the danger and the boredom, the biggest downside of being in a submarine was the stench. The odor from old cooking oil, toilets, people vomiting from sea sickness, body odor from three dozen men who couldn't wash very often. And then with only a half gallon of water was awful. The men doused themselves liberally with cologne, especially one called 4711 to try to mask the smell. It didn't work. There was one unbeatable upside to being on a U-boat, the food. Just like the passengers on the city of Benares, the crew of U-48 were very well fed and happy about it. There were sausages hanging between the torpedoes, bacon, ham, cured half boars, venison throughout the war, even when food was scarce in Germany. U-boat crews had plenty to eat. 
Like most U-boats at that time, U-48 was crewed by young men. Many were still teenagers, like Rolf Hilsey. The average age of a U-boat sailor was 20 years old. That meant they were always hungry, unless they were seasick. These young men might or might not have agreed with all that Hitler stood for, murdering, murdering Jews, Romani people, and others that the leader, as Hitler was known as, decided were not pure enough to live. But they were fighting for their country, which was Germany. And under Hitler, Germany was trying to take over the world, killing whoever got in the way. U-boat crews' orders were to torpedo as many ships as they could, sink the vessels, destroy the supplies, kill everyone on board. Rolf Hilsey came from a family that was anti-Nazi. His father was vehemently against Hitler, but Rolf had been drafted when he was 17 and put into U-boat service, mostly because he was under 5 foot 8 and could swim. In the crack submarine, he learned how to write messages in Morse code and how to operate a wireless radio. Soon after his first stint at sea, just after the war started in 1939, Rolf Hilsey actually met Adolf Hitler. Rolf's U-boat was success, had successfully sunk a British battleship and was invited to Berlin to meet Der Führer. Fur. Hitler shook hands with everyone. When he reached Rolf Hilsey, Hitler said to him, I hear you are the baby of the crew. Yes, I am the 17-year-old. And I am, the 17-year-old answered. How was your experience on the U-boat? Hitler asked him. I can't remember really a lot, Hilsey told him. I was too frightened. Hitler smiled and walked on. The U-boat crew sat down for a celebratory tea. After a few minutes, Hitler announced, You will excuse me. I'm a very busy man. I have to leave. But before he left, he came back to Rolf, tapped him on the shoulder, and said, I was out in the First World War One, in the First World War. I was frightened as well. It will be better next time. He seemed like such a nice, normal man, Hilsey later said. On September 17, 1940, about a year after meeting Hitler, Hitler, Rolf Hilsey was more experienced, but preparing for an attack was still suspenseful and scary. On his many missions, he was at the center of everything. His radio post was next to the commander, just below the U-boat's conning tower, which held the periscope. U-48 still had the lead ship in the convoy in its sights. It was obvious what kind of ship it was, but it was big, and big mattered. Well, we've got it, Commander Blackrot and his crew agreed, though everyone was tense. They knew they should be able to sink this ship and get away without danger to themselves. The lack of a warship in the convoy made it much less of a risk. But Blind Rot decided he would wait until nightfall. Maybe the storm would have abated by then, too. So this is not a real picture, but it is a hand-drawn picture of what it might have looked like. Nice.